Hey guys, and welcome to my channel, Time is But a Window. Now in this video, we're going to be discussing the future of Counter-Strike. This includes recent reports of the next version of CSGO. Now obviously, Counter-Strike has been out for a very long time. For example, this pre-beta build was back from August 8th of 2011. This means that as of posting this video, Counter-Strike Global Offensive is almost 10 years old. And that is a very long time for a game to be around. Now thankfully, Counter-Strike has gone through a lot of upgrades since then. In all honesty, it almost looks like a completely different version of Counter-Strike than when it was originally created. To show off how significant that change actually was, let's go through the ages of Counter-Strike. Here in front of you, you can see Counter-Strike 1.6. Now, the beta versions did look significantly worse than Counter-Strike 1.6, but I'm not going to go through all the beta versions of Counter-Strike. Now, this was an entire game created on the same engine as Counter-Strike 1.6. Now, what they did do was upgrade the textures and, of course, the player models. There was also an entire UI overhaul. It did also introduce a single player experience, but that doesn't really matter since Counter-Strike is mostly a multiplayer online game. Now obviously Condition Zero was not successful and the competitive community decided to stay with Counter-Strike 1.6. But visually, this is exactly what CSGO has gone through over the past few years. Improved textures, improved player models, and improved UI. Now, the next version of Counter-Strike wouldn't come for another whole seven months. Okay, okay, so it's pretty surprising how quickly Counter-Strike Source came out. Obviously, it released with Half-Life 2 as a multiplayer component. Now, this game was built on an entirely new engine, and it really does show, even though you can clearly see that I am playing with 800 by 600 resolution in this video. Now, I believe the goals intended for Counter-Strike Source were to get the entire community from Counter-Strike 1.6 and Condition Zero to reunite into one game. Now, sadly, it didn't work. Even though the mechanics closely resembled Counter-Strike 1.6, it did take a couple of the mechanics from Counter-Strike Condition Zero as well. But CSGO released as a very buggy game. For example, it added physics. Not only that, but physics objects could actually collide with player models. This made the game incredibly buggy. In fact, there was actually a bug at the beginning of this game due to the physics engine, where if someone was going downstairs, no one else on the server could even counter strafe. So obviously, a lot of players decided to go back to 1.6. The good news is, after about the first year, most of the game-breaking bugs were fixed. Now, Counter-Strike Source would be around for a very long time. Eight entire years. And because the game was around for so long, it was eventually ported to a new engine for the Orange Box. After it being out for six years, it was ported over to the Orange Box. And visually, the game never looked better. Well, except for one thing, it didn't look any different. There were no improved textures, no improved models, and nothing like that. What we did get was an improved netcode, which was completely night and day. It made the game feel so much better. Alright, so now I bet you're wondering why I'm boring you guys with all this useless information. Because honestly, both of these are very relevant to the upgrade that is going to be coming for CSGO. For example, as I mentioned, CSGO has been around about 10 years at this point. After about 6 years, the graphics were redesigned by improving player models and maps. At around that point, they also added Panorama UI. Really, at this point, the only thing for them left to change is the engine. Which brings us to the long, arduous process that is porting CSGO to Source 2. Now, so far, there's only one FPS game that I can think of that Valve has made on the Source 2 engine. And that game is Half-Life Alex, a VR game. And let's be honest, it does look absolutely fantastic. But it is VR. Which brings us to the next section of this video, what we know about CSGO 2. So what we do know is that they are porting CSGO to the Source 2 engine. Now they have tried to do this in the past, it was unsuccessful, so they did back ports back to the original Source engine. For example, here are some screenshots of Dust 2 in the Source 2 engine. Now this is right when the Source 2 engine was originally being created back in 2000. 2013. Now obviously, while it did look better than Dust 2 looked back in those days, it looked nowhere near as good as the one that we got backported from the Source 2 engine. This is a great example of how much improving textures and map design help make the game look better rather than just improving the engine. Okay, so back to what I was saying, they originally started making Counter-Strike on the Source 2 engine, but from how different those example pictures looked like, it made it look like it was trying to reinvent the wheel. Basically, I believe that was a complete Counter-Strike overhaul before they they realized how popular the game was going to get. Now keep in mind, before August 2013, there was only about 20,000 people playing at any given time CS Global Offensive. That is, until they did something that would change the game forever, releasing skin. The arms deal update was released on August 13th, 2013. For the next few years, the game would grow exponentially. 
Obviously, this was being driven by the skin market. Now, due to this reason alone, I believe that the entire remake of Counter-Strike Global Offensive was scrapped. After all, with the value of guns and how many players there were to transfer over, how many of them would be willing to give up their inventories entirely to move to a new game? So once this idea was scrapped, they came up with a new idea. Instead of transferring CSGO over to the Source 2 engine, simply try to upgrade CSGO with features from the Source 2 engine by backporting. This is why we got the upgraded UI, upgraded options menu, and upgraded maps, as well as the upgraded models. As I said at the beginning of this video, this game looks like a completely new version of Counter-Strike compared to when it was first released. Not only that, but it bypassed the issues of having to transfer the inventories to a completely new engine while still maintaining the ability to be a massive visual upgrade, which is exactly what most people were hoping for going from the Source engine to the Source 2 engine. I don't know if anyone out there remembers or can find the exact video where it was mentioned, but several years ago when Valve was asked about porting CSGO to the Source 2 engine, they responded that they didn't understand why people wanted a new version of Counter-Strike with the Source 2 engine so badly and what they expected to find. Now the overwhelming response at the time was better graphics, which at the time they responded, you don't need a new engine to get better graphics, which obviously they proved by updating Counter-Strike Global Offensive. But times are changing, and while this is still a a massive improvement from what Counter-Strike Global Offensive originally looked like, there are two major game changers. One of which is the implementation of real-time ray tracing in modern games, which can add a whole nother level of graphical realism. And the other is Valorant. Now, originally, Counter-Strike Global Offensive was the only massive competitive FPS tactical shooter. Currently, CSGO has 1 million players on every day. And while that sounds like a lot, Valorant is reported to have 3 million and because of this, Valve decided to start working on bringing CSGO to the Source 2 engine once again. Well, thanks to Tyler McVickerson, we know that they are bringing in ray tracing, which means we can expect the next upgrade to CSGO to look a whole lot better. But they've also added VR support, which is a little bit scary if you're a PC gamer like me. Personally, I'm hoping the game doesn't turn into VR only. But given that Counter-Strike Global Offensive is mainly PC players, I don't think they're going to try to make the full transition. Other things I expect to see in a new version of Counter-Strike are obviously better anti-cheat, though probably not something as invasive as the anti-cheat used in Valorant. More standardization of settings like in Valorant. Basically, Valorant does this thing where if you use 4x3 and try to to stretch it, it doesn't actually stretch the player models. And since everyone in CSGO that's professional uses stretched, they probably want to look at that and see if maybe that's a design flaw. But who knows, maybe they'll add an FOV slider. Now regardless of that, things they're going to have to maintain are music boxes and skins. And while I'd love to see them go retro and remake Counter-Strike 1.6 with ray tracing graphics, after all, nostalgia's pretty big right now, so I'd be all for a Counter-Strike remaster. There has never been a more successful version of Counter-Strike than CSGO with its skin market. Keep in mind, that's only with the skin market. Technically, Counter-Strike 1.6 was far more successful prior to skins. So who knows, maybe they'll surprise us all and do a Counter-Strike 1.6 remaster with CSGO skins. But that's highly unlikely. So the next question is, when will it come out? Now, I reported on this last year, but obviously, due to COVID, things got slowed down a bit. And due to large group in-person playtests not being possible at this time, CSGO on Source 2 has been completely halted for now. Now, had that not happened, it was estimated about two years before the reveal of CSGO on Source 2. In the most recent reports, it was said that it was playable, but it was buggy as hell. So we know it's there, we know it has RTX support, we know it's playable, and that it's definitely not ready for release. But we also know it's a long ways away, and best case scenario, if they can go back to business as usual tomorrow, it would be about two years. So as much as I would love to see it as early as 2022, I'm going to have to say it probably won't be out until fall of 2023. Anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and as always have a great day.